Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Welcome back to The Thinker everyone. Um, a different video today. Um, away from the renovation, not a reprieve because it's still there. But um, we've been approached by a company that supplies lithium batteries. And um, the company is, is pronounced Red Odeo, apparently. Um, they, they said they've seen our solar installation and asked us if we'd like to review one of their batteries. Um, after a bit of to and fro in, we're on 48 volt system here. Um, obviously it was beyond the realm of test samples um, to supply us with 48 volt batteries uh, cost of thousands of pounds, thousands of euros, thousands of dollars. Um, but we had a few different ideas um, about what to do because we've got a lot of solar stuff left from previous installations and stuff. Um, so we came up with the idea, friends of ours have got a camper van and um, every summer they go away for about three months um, a to get away from the heat here and B to see you know other parts of Spain and Europe so I thought and he actually coincidentally and um, they asked me about installing a solar system in the camper van to keep them going because they like to do a lot of off-grid stuff and wild camping and you know wild overnight parking not on campsites and um, the, the timing was perfect really so I, I spoke with a company concerned Red Odeo and um, said you know this is what I, I plan to do or what we could do if they were still happy with us to go ahead on that basis um, they'd send us a battery they were going to send us um, a 12 volt 200 amp battery um, but it was too big to fit in the space in the camper so they ended up what they sent us is um, a 12 volt 100 amp it's an LFP battery a lithium iron phosphate not ion it's a big difference there um, it's the latest state-of-the-art technology um, in lithium batteries. It's got its own battery management system, so it looks after itself and protects itself and, you know, does it all itself, basically, um, keeping itself happy. So, let's have a look at what we've got in the box. So, this is actually how it arrived. Um, extremely well packaged, extremely good condition. Um, straight on the top, we've got... Um, well, the instruction manuals, I guess, we'll have a look through those in a minute. Um, and some things which I don't know what they are yet. Again, well packaged. What are these? We'll find out in a minute. Um, let's see if we can get it out of the box. There it is. The other advantage of lithium batteries is the weight compared to lead acid. They are so light. Um, right, fantastic. So, um, a level up what else of stuff we've got and have a look through these manuals, make sure we're going to do it right with the charging facilities and things, and um, crack on. There you can see there, actually, live pole 4. Uh, I can bring that closer there. That's what it is. Fantastic. Right, so you get all the connectors for the battery, screwing connectors for these um, and an instruction manual which basically tells you how to set it up um, it gives you all the charging parameters and everything which is 14.4 volts in this case um, maximum continuous power load is 1280 watts a whopping 1280 watts which is pretty good in a camper van and, um, yeah, all the information required to set up your charge controller. Um, I'm just going to work through these instructions now um, and then test the battery bolt so you can see what we've got. It tells you, yeah, we'll do that first. So I checked the voltage, it was 13.15 um, and then the recommended charger current is 20 amps at 14 2 volts. We've got it on a charger over there to charge it up fully. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, it tells you 
how to estimate voltages to estimate the state of charge, loads of information in this manual. Um, yeah, that is happy days. So, um, yeah, we'll let that charge up a bit now and um, we'll have a look at the rest of the stuff we've got that's going in the camper van. We've got, apart from the battery, um, charge controller, um, isolation switches, fuses, um, and what else is there? Of course, the solar panel, which is outside. Right, and this is the panel, and um, this is going on the roof. The only problem we've got is finding a way to mount it to the roof. There are roof bars up there, um, but we might have to make some brackets or something. So we're going to have a look. So there we go, that's where it's going to sit. Um, we just need to make some brackets to clamp it to this rail at the side here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good, I think. It actually works out quite well. It's um, just to the edge of the bars on both sides. So let's have a look what we've got. So imagine that's a roof bar. <laughs> that's going to sit, that's going to be on the roof. We're going to put a bracket underneath it like that. I'm going to cut this into sections and then we can bolt up through there into the panel which is going to sit over the top. If that makes sense, if it doesn't, it will in a few minutes. Right, so we've got our four brackets and I'm just going to clean them up on the angle grinder then drill an hole in them for our bolts to go through. Bench grinder, not angle grinder. Next thing is of course to drill holes in them for our bolts to go through. Using 8 milli bolts with an 8.5 milli clearance hole. Bit of cutting fluid as always, keep the bit sharp. Right, so we've got our brackets, or one, and um, we're going to try this one first, and then if it works alright, he's going to sit on there with the bar going through there, be a bolt through there, and a bolt through there, it can't move. Um, so I'm just going to drill the panel, then we'll get it back on the roof, and um, check it all fits. If it does, we'll make the others exactly the same. Right, so we've just tried it on the roof, that works absolutely beautifully. So we're going to replicate these holes on the other corners and then make three more brackets exactly the same format as that and then it can go on the roof. I'm just going to pile them all first um, and then put the big bit through. I'll just put a piece of wood behind there just so I don't scuff the back of the panel. Right, okay, it's on the roof, um, brackets in place, working well, absolutely solid. Now it's time to drill a hole through the roof for the wires. So moving inside, um, it's a bit dark, hopefully it'll get a bit brighter, there we go. It's going to enter through um, into this wardrobe here where the electrical box and other connections come in. This is the flue for the heater. So we can gauge where that is on the roof. So we're going to want to come through somewhere over here. So I'm going to go up, have a look, see where's the best spot. And um, drill a hole through the roof. Okay, so we're going to go through the roof here. We're going to put this 
cable gland on obviously to seal it from the water um, it's going to be exactly there hopefully um, we're going to try anyway So there we go, there's the hole, I'm going to do another one just next to it for the other cable and um, yeah happy days. Right so the wires are in and the cable glands on, we're just going to seeker flex him down into position there, he will stay honestly and um, then we can move to the inside. Right so we've got our wires in, um, first thing we're going to do is put a, an inline isolator fuse on the live there um, so it can be switched off at any time in the future and to protect it from a, a surge or an overload right it's not easy to film in here as you can probably imagine but the fuse is on the wall there um, and we put the charge controller just on the front there what we've got to do now is run the cables from the fuse into the charge controller and then from the charge controller to the new battery Okay, charge controller's in. All we need to do now is take the positive and neg from that to the battery. We're going to run them down inside all this, underneath all this, so they're out of sight, all the way along there. And the battery is going where this battery is here. So we'll get that one out and um, put the new one in and um, just run two more cables. Right, so the battery's in place. This is where it's going to live behind the seat. And um, we just need to make some ring terminals to connect onto the battery terminals and get them crimped onto the ends of the cable. Right, so here's our big length of cable. Um, it's too long, we need to cut it. But I want to put the ring terminals on first, and they just crimp on um, with a mad crimping machine that we've got. Um, if I can find, I'll go and get it and show you. So, all we do with these, bear the end of your wire back, terminal goes on there like that this little thing lift him up stick him in there and give him a crack with the hammer you can see that hopefully um, this goes in there like that Just whack it Yeah, he's certainly got him good. There we are. You see that super crimped. Um, I'll get this in. I'll do the positive next, and then we'll get him in place. And then we can cut the other end off where it goes into the charge controller as required. So I've decided to relocate the battery to the other side um, at the owner's request and um, all we need to do now, the crimps are on, is just put an inline fuse breaker um, just on the wall behind the battery there to protect the battery or to protect that side of the things and then program the charge controller. If you can make that out, um, the charge controller is alive. Um, all we need to do now is program it to the specific parameters of the battery um, switch the panel on and um, it should go right okay so we're done um, the charge has been set with all the specifications um, all your settings come up on that page there if you can see that um, fantastic as I said the, the battery's got its own BMS in it anyway um, so um, we can't do any more now until um, they go on the big trip they're going away for three months in the summer and uh, hopefully it's going to do them alright it's a, it's a 12 volt, 12 volt battery, 100 amp, which should give them um, 1.28 kilowatts, 1280 usable watts. Um, unlike lead acid batteries, there's actually a table there, you can see that. You can run it, it's recommended to disconnect at 1% of charge. You can run them right down without any danger at all. Um, I think it's, it's a minimum of 4,000 cycles 
you can get out of them. Um, if you obviously if you discharge them less, it can be 15, 20,000 cycles. So um, we'll report back in a bit with how they're getting on with it. So another good job well done. Um, they're gonna finish off um, anything that needs finishing off. Said it, said it didn't matter, wasn't a problem. There's also got an inverter to go in there as well. It was a probably bin back for me to put that in. Um, but for now, they're good to go. Well, they've gone actually, so fantastic. Happy days. We will be updating you on how the battery performs. And um, so, watch this space. <laughs> 